I'm Paul and welcome back to my channel The Peculiar Paladin uh, where I do movie reviews and TV show reviews and reactions to different uh, trailers and teasers. Obviously I saw like Justice League trailer has come out, uh, the Defenders trailers have come out for Marvel yesterday so I would do reaction videos for that uh, in the channel so please do hang out for that. Uh, but today I want to talk about the spoilers section of the film Dunkirk. And if you have seen the film, please stay here. And you know, if you might have missed something that I might have caught, and I would talk about that. But if you haven't seen the film, please do get out of here. Uh, do watch the film and then come back and watch this video. Uh, again, you might have missed some things that I would talk about here. And if you have seen that and if you wonder about it and you are surprised, uh, please hit that like button for that. Yes. And if you have, uh, I will not talk about it, just a spoilers, you know, story wise. Obviously, every channel is going to talk about that. And they will talk about the plot twist, the hero dying, or hero miraculously escaping from the villains and everything. Again, it's all present with all the channels. But I'm going to do a different aspect of it. I'll talk about them, obviously. This is a spoilers video, uh, after all. But I'll also talk about the tidbits and, you know, the cameos that uh, you might have missed. Um, your actors that might probably be not successful, but they are actually successful and stuff like this. Uh, obviously, and I'm going to end the video. All the videos will end it with like inspiration how this film came along like the director might have had a vision for this uh, you know all along or some uh, some films might have uh, inspired him to do this and what are the things that are gone in this uh, ideology for this film so here I go so the first thing that I want to talk about was uh, Harry Styles um, uh, presence in the uh, you know stardom thing was not recognized by Christopher Nolan what I meant by this is uh, when he, Christopher Nolan was hiring people for you know the job, uh, he didn't know that uh, he had a stardom uh, beyond acting. Like he was a star of One Direction, he was a singer in One Direction. He had fame of his own, uh, but he didn't know that. He thought he was uh, just a starter kid who wanted to make big in Hollywood. Uh, but the assistant directors uh, corrected him to the fact that he had already had stardom and he knew his way around uh, you know, the film industry. So that was a cool thing. Uh, and the second thing that I want to talk about was Michael Caine's cameo. And again, you might have wondered in the entire film where the hell was Michael Caine? You know, uh, where did he go? Because he always, always 100% uh, is present uh, in all of Nolan's film and they were wondering what happened why didn't he present here and again this film is, was not like your story driven it was not it was story driven but it was not your script driven it was they didn't have that much dialogues in the uh, entire film so if you are like it, is, it was like one hour 45 minutes film and it did, it only had like uh, 60 or 60 odd minutes of uh, dialogue the two uh, not too much like shortened and chopped up so like short conversations uh, needing conversations uh, that are there you know too much it didn't skew off into the unnecessary paths so Michael Caine uh, would not uh, been a good choice in the film because all the actors who portrayed the role did a good job and uh, I don't know I, I never picture like Michael Caine in this film at all like I would have thought like as a Christopher Nolan fan, I was I wanting to have uh, Michael Caine in the role, obviously. Uh, but I pictured myself like, okay, okay, in this character, if Michael Caine played, it would have been fine. No. Uh, so that moment didn't happen to me in the entire uh, film. The cast was perfect. So uh, how would you put Michael Caine in this film? And Nolan thought, okay, just his uh, voice would be fine. And if you didn't notice this, uh, he would come in the, um, you know, when the English uh, fighter pilots would join the fight uh, before Dunkirk, he would be the one commanding them and telling them to fly at this altitude uh, to check their fuel for a perfect uh, attack and retreat. Uh, so that voice would be Michael Caine. And if you have missed it, so there you go, I told you. And if you have not missed it and if you have found it on yourself, and then let me know in the comments down below. That too is fine. And the next thing is the uh, scarecrow actor that played in the film. Uh, he would uh, be playing a post-traumatic stress disorder soldier uh, who would be blown up from the skies and he would be shivering. Uh, he would be like, ah, oh my god, this is an end. Uh, why are you going to fight again? Please let me go home and stuff like this. He will be playing that role. And obviously it would be weird for us to see him playing that role because he would be playing Scarecrow. His job would be scaring others and it was kind of an irony for me. And I'm a big irony lover. So it was uh, ironic and uh, iconic as well. And the next thing that I wanted to talk about is actually a spoiler in the story. So now at least I'm warning you again, get out of here. 
uh, is uh, obviously two things. Uh, the first thing is ob- both of things are like a death to uh, in a certain extent. One is a definite death, and the second is like captured, but obviously he's gonna die or go to prison camp. Uh, the first thing is I want to talk about is a Gibson character in the film. Uh, he would be a French soldier. Um, he would find a body in uh, the beach and he would take attack from an English soldier and would pass on as an English soldier to escape the uh, wretched handling of the enemies uh, but however you would find it hard to maneuver but obviously when the hero would join him uh, on this uh, you know thing and they both would not have that much dialogue at all actually to be honest with you obviously he wanted to hide his uh, accent and hide his language and the hero mainly doesn't talk about that much in the film at all so they both will have a bond uh, you know eye to eye contact they would know what to do next and stuff like that and they would try to escape as much as they can and uh, when they would do obviously gibson would be um, when they would run into a difficult situation obviously the human mind goes to uh, escaping someone from their own team and gibson would be that character you know everyone would turn on him and he would be like uh, he would be still silent because not to let them know about his origin uh, but the people will be thinking that he's a german spy and he wants to get out uh, you know give yourself to the enemy so that we can escape and stuff like that obviously he wouldn't go that far uh, they wouldn't go that far they had to Uh, escape in that moment and they would do that but uh, when the, another attack would come he would obviously die of uh, you know drowning in the water so that was a sad part actually the uh, music would be perfect on that moment and he would die and the next thing uh, is also a spoiler it's actually the capture of tom hardy uh, you wouldn't believe uh, me if i said like the hero of the film is captured by the enemies in the end even though the film was a successful one i mean in terms of like the contextual wise Uh, the hero saved everyone that's the thing right hero saved everyone hero is hero but in this one hero would save everyone uh, but he would himself get captured to the enemies uh, tom hardy would be the you know flight um, captain i don't know uh, i don't know he's not a flight captain he would be the pilot that would save everyone uh, even though you know two of his own buddies would uh, you know <coughs> blow up in the flight and they would escape but Uh, he would be alone and the german fighters german uh, bombers would be coming on you know constantly barraging the ships uh, you know killing off soldiers in the beach so he had to keep on saving them and obviously his fuel gauge would be broken so he had to keep note of how much fuel he has and at the end uh, his fuel would run out and it, his engine would be badly running but he would save them one last time and then he would land a ship on a beach where the german forces are close by that they would capture him in the end that would be literally the last scene and uh, the next thing that i wanted to talk about is the inspiration for this film and the dialogues that are uh, you that are there in actually that might have been used in the real world as well as in some other shows that i want to talk about uh, obviously the spoiler scene is over so if you want to watch this part alone you can uh, the again this um, this thing is like uh, inspiration is like my own take on the film so you don't have to get angry like that's not true you bastard and stuff like that don't do that this is my ideology uh, my thinking of the film you know how nolan was inspired how that film taken the note of the film the tone of the film and everything uh, if you have a different idea if you have your own idea if you have your own you know thought process please do let me know in the comments down below we will have uh, grown up conversations uh, but no if not you if you are going to be a little asshole i will also be an asshole so don't do that So the inspiration for the film is obviously 2001 uh, Space Odyssey uh, which came out in 1968 uh, it was a revolutionary sci-fi film and the, it's like uh, the film was too extreme so either the people loved it or people hated it and that's because of the tone of the film and uh, the, the film was 3 hours long and in that 3 hours you will find dialogues only for like about 45 minutes and the two will be um, you know contrasted in a certain area so the first 25 mil- minutes would be music and the next 25 minutes would be dialogue and then next 20 minutes would be music and then 25 minutes would be dialogue and then the rest would be music so that would be the problem in the film uh, so yeah uh, they would explain the story with the music i loved that film because uh, that film made me concentrate on the story rather than just Uh, lay back for entertainment obviously films are for entertainment you know you can just uh, stretch your chair you know uh, or lay on the bed and watch the film um, whatever genre it may be obviously action comedy or romantic things would make you you know watch the film a little bit more closely but this one took it to another level you know you have to really concentrate on the film obviously the music would keep you going on and on and on you know you have to think uh, okay that that's that okay you have to you know take the dots yourself and connect it 
and this film is also the same thing but obviously this film is not in terms like that complicated in terms of story it's simple uh, but they kind of uh, didn't want dialogues to be honest with you if they had too much dialogues it's not about combat it's not about escaping okay it's about surviving first of all so they kind of cut short on the dialogue so obviously nolan is uh, intelligent one to know like if the audience would get bored if there there's no dialogue or there's no uh, interesting that things that can take place in the movie so you would have taken the the film is again i said like 1 hour 45 minutes so the dialogue would be not like 60 minutes to be honest with you 45 minutes 40 minutes of dialogue only in the film entire film uh, he would have spread the dialogues uh, perfectly around like a seasoning uh, on the food so he would have like entire film you would see dialogues obviously everywhere but they would be shortened up a little they would not be a you know constructive one it would not be a building one it should be just like okay this that so like this so that's a cool thing and the next inspiration is obviously the ending of the film uh, the soldiers would be uh, you know shamed of themselves they would be thinking like what if this is the end okay every people would be spitting on them or stuff like that uh, but the people would be amazed and the people would be uh, helping them the people would be like cheering for them and the soldier would read a message from uh, winston churchill obviously uh, he would give a never surrender message and that message would be actually from real life he would have said this on a um, radio uh, broadcast where even hitler would have been hearing it uh, so that's a cool thing as well and this uh, dialogue was also uh, used in uh, a tv show called as uh, world wars uh, if you would have seen it in uh, history channel that was just like six episodes one hour long Uh, but it had good actors nice music and the story would have been told in a most emphatic way as as they can you know they would have said it in a good way and the dialogue would be used there for like an inspirational one a motivational one uh, and that was used in this film too as a ending note you know the film would go on and the end would be like this message said to the soldiers by the prime minister of england so that's it for me guys thank you for watching this video uh, hit that like button if you loved it uh, if you have seen this uh, and if you all know about this like the michael kane one if you already knew no problem uh, or if you find it new let me know in the comments down below and obviously uh, you can tell me about how this film is inspired by something else uh, we can have a conversation in the comments section or even in the discussion page of my channel so let's do that and subscribe to the channel for everything that is movies and tv shows uh, where i'll do reviews and reactions and sometimes even like i will talk about the fictional things like how for example uh, the history of game of thrones that is like uh, fictional but it's fun right so i do that So thank you guys I'll see you on the next one bye